There's not much that can compare to the feeling of seeing a despised villain meet their fitting end. Nowhere but in the world of video games will you attain such sweet gratification. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most satisfying villain deaths in video games. I know you understand. For this list, we're taking a look back at some of the most appreciated ill fates of some of video games' biggest villains. No deaths necessarily have to be performed by the hand of the player, but an indefined death nonetheless. Since we're talking about key characters kicking the bucket, be wary of spoilers. Yeah, it's me he's after. Hey. I'll buy you some time. Hey, wait! If we jump! Number 20. Pandak Baby Panay. Just Cause 2. I am going to control the whole world. No matter how many times we do it, there's just no feeling quite like taking down a brutal dictator who considers himself untouchable. Despite ruling over the island of Panau with plenty of military might at his back, it becomes clear that Panay has lost control of the situation, given the three insurgent groups rising to take control of the island for themselves. In the most Hollywood of finales, Panay and Rico exchange flows while on top of a missile, which the despot ultimately loses, leaving him on a one-way ticket to Boomtown. Hasta la vista, baby! Number 19, Handsome Jack, Borderlands 2. You want to stop the greatness that is Handsome Jack? There could not be a more fitting end to the CEO of Hyperion Corporation and would-be ruler of Pandora. As the Vault Hunter, you have to endure Jack's non-stop taunts, death threats, and bouts of insanity throughout the entire game. And while his selfish nature is ridiculously entertaining, it still feels good to obliterate his plans and watch him get the final bitch. No, no, I can't. I like this. Not when I'm so close, and not at the hands of a filthy bandit! You can listen to him ramble about how he is the hero that Pandora deserves, or you can just shoot him then and there. <laughs> not so handsome anymore, eh, Jack? Oh. Number 18, Devin Weston, Grand Theft Auto 5. And I'm telling you that I don't give a flying f. <laughs> After spending so much time with our three majorly flawed protagonists and overcoming insurmountable odds, who honestly could choose anything but option C for the game's finale? Out of the douchebags that Franklin, Michael and Trevor have come across, Devon stood out as the worst. Far too rich for his own good, spyless and as vain as they come. The boys finally got their revenge after kidnapping him, locking him in the trunk of a car and pushing him off the edge of the cliff. It may not be the bloodiest of endings, but by god, the build-up is so pitch perfect that by the time the car heads over the edge, it's almost beautiful. <laughs> Number 17, Uberto Alberti, Assassin's Creed 2. Trusted friend of the Auditore family. According to the history books, this guy was a saint. Karma truly does come back to bite you in the ass, or in this case, stab you multiple times in the chest with a hidden blade. Once a friend of the Altair family, this member of the Templar Order betrays his friends and arranges the public executions for Ezio and his family for the sake of his financial well-being. You and your collaborators are hereby sentenced to death. Regardless of whether he regretted his actions or not afterwards, he doesn't have much time to dwell on it soon, as Ezio takes vengeance by assassinating him in public. Guess money can't save you from everything after all. You would have done the same to save the ones you love. Yes, I would. And I have. Number 16, Mecha Hitler, Wolfenstein 3D. There's very little emotional investment or moving narrative with this particular death. Just the sheer thrill of knowing you just blew up the Fuhrer in bloody pieces. Effortlessly effective in its premise, the very idea of having an entire firefight with Hitler, who happens to be armed with a mecha suit, is just too hilarious not to be a fun time. After gunning your way through endless amounts of Nazis and undead mutants, you finally come across the Piesto de Resistance. Unloading clip after clip until the leader of the Third Reich is packed with so much lead, he basically melts. Classic. Oh, Peter's there. Number 15, General Shepard, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. No! 
he may think of himself as a patriot, but the actions of this one soldier is pretty far removed from the American dream. After losing faith in his nation following the deaths of 30,000 soldiers, Shepard sought to escalate the war between the US and Russia in order to give the American people something to rally behind. To this extent, he goes as far as to kill members of his own task force, including Ghost and Roach. I mean, logically it doesn't make a lot of sense, but nevertheless it all culminates in a final confrontation to avenge your fallen comrades, with one of the most satisfying knife throws ever. Number 14, William Carver, The Walking Dead, Season 2. And how is it that we're repaid for our trust? With treachery? With deceit? Survival is everything, though some individuals choose to take it too far. As Clementine ventures into the undead infested world, she and her new group find themselves in the clutches of Carver, the merciless leader of the sanctuary whose disciplinary actions often led to someone either dying or getting horribly maimed. Just ask Kenny. <laughs> Kenny! Kenny! However, he doesn't stay on top for very long. As the sanctuary is overrun with walkers, Kenny decides to get even by breaking Carver's skull with a crowbar. Whether you want to stay and watch the brutality is up to you, but either way, it's a truly messy way to go, and we love it. Number 13, GLaDOS, Portal. Congratulations. Was it worth it? Because despite your violent behavior, the only thing you've managed to break so far is my heart. She is one of video games greatest villains, and the fact that her defeat left you feeling wholeheartedly satisfied just adds to her psychotic appeal. Throughout the various lethal tests you have to endure, GLaDOS has been there, mocking you every step of the way. We are pleased that you made it through the final challenge where we pretended we were going to murder you. Always trying to have you killed, lying about the cake, messing with your companion cube, by the time you reach the heart of the Aperture Science Facility, you are done being petrified and ready to put this AI in her place. After melting her various AI cores, we can only watch in delight as the machine with a god complex faces the reality of losing. At least until Portal 2. Oh, it's you. You know her? It's been a long time. Number 12, Micah Bell, Red Dead Redemption 2. There I was, having a dull day only for you, to liven it up by letting me help you shoot up half a town. <laughs> You're a funny fella, Arthur. Real funny. He shot up a whole town just for the sheriff confiscating his guns. He acted as a mole within Dutch's Kang for the Pinkertons, resulting in the gang falling apart. And he killed Arthur. What a jerk. Eventually, John Marston and Sadie Adler track Micah down to the mountains. But in the last minute reveal, Dutch is with Micah, as the two are supposedly rebuilding the gang. Yet, thanks to John's smart wits, Micah gets a reward that only a traitor deserves. You shot me. Even better, you get to deliver the final blow. Number 11, Imlorith. The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. Out of all the members of the Wild Hunt, there was one we were looking forward to drive a sword through. Not only did this elf relentlessly chase after Ciri, but his participation in the Battle of Kara Moran led to the death of Geralt's mentor and father figure Vesmir. As you can imagine, we were ready for a sword swinging showdown. And while Immelreth's strength is undeniable, he's still not powerful enough to survive a fire blast to the face. Guess that's what happens when you mess with a Witcher. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 10, Maester Seymour, Final Fantasy X. Lady Yuna, certainly you knew of these things, did you not? Have you ever met a villain who just doesn't know how to stay dead? Yeah, well, Seymour's that guy. After learning of his treachery, Titus and his party go to kill him and ended up being branded as traitors. Then he reappears and is now getting married to Yuna. And he kills one of Oren's friends in the process, Kenok, where you also find him again. 
unpleasant. Very well. I will give you your death. You seem to want it so. But he's still alive, and now he wipes up Kimari's tribe on his third life. You fight him again, but guess what? You fight him one last time. Don't you ever give up? But his tyranny finally comes to an end inside Sin, when Yuna provides him with a long overdue sending. But even after I am gone, Spira's sorrow will prevail. Number 9. Zeus, God of War 3. Don't confuse this object, this construction of Hephaestus with your own flesh and blood. Balder from the 2018 revival may have been a dick to Kratos, but his tragic backstory makes us feel more remorseful for him. No such remorse for this Greek god, and in one of the most epic boss fights in the franchise. After succumbing to Zeus's portrayal in God of War 2, with the Blade of Olympus draining his power, Kratos gets the opportunity to give the King of the Gods the beatdown of his life. Oh yeah, and did we also mention Zeus is Kratos' father? Talk about a dysfunctional family. After stabbing him rather fittingly with the Blade of Olympus, Kratos finally finishes him up with his bare hands. And I'm sure that Kratos will never ever regret this moment. Number 8, Shao Kahn, Mortal Kombat 11. But I've returned, and I will save you from his madness. Shao Kahn is a villain who needs no explanation. The bane of every Mortal Kombat fan since his debut in Mortal Kombat 2 as the final boss. However, it's his demise in Mortal Kombat 11's story mode that is the most satisfying of all. As Katana, you face off Khan in his arena, giving you the chance to humiliate him in front of his people. But the satisfaction doesn't just come with his death, but what happens as a result. The throne is yours. You have united Outworld, Kitana Khan. The true heir of Outworld has finally claimed the throne. From this day on, may all our peoples fight together as one. Number 7, Officer Tenpenny, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I'll take that, Hernandez. Hey, that's my paper, man. That's money. This is drug money. It's my money, man. It never gets more crooked than a crook police from Los Santos. Although the definitive centerpiece of this unruliness was none other than Officer Tenpenny. Through extortion and blackmail, Tenpenny pulls the strings to the dirty doings of the city, exclusively using protagonist CJ as his personal pawn. Now you get this straight. We own you. You're ours. We can shit on you from such a height, you'll think God himself has crapped on you. In Tenpenny's efforts to escape Los Santos, he's thwarted by CJ in a desperate car chase. Crashing and running over an overpass, the broken and battered Tenpenny suffers a slow and delightful death. I took the trash out! I did! <laughs> and I do it all again! Number 6. David. The Last of Us. Name's David. This here's my friend James. But from a larger group, women, children, they're all very, very hungry. David leads a faction to cannibals and comes across Ellie in an infected ambush. Upon discovering his ill intentions, Ellie attempts to escape, but later finds herself locked in an old abandoned building with him alone. How did you do it? Maneuvering herself very quietly to escape, Ellie must play the most creepiest of hide and seeks we've ever encountered. In a final desperate struggle, Ellie breaks free and hacks away at his face with his own machete. On top of his demise, it's also a relief to see Ellie survive what is clearly a traumatic experience. He tried to... Oh, baby girl. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Number 5. The Stranger. The Walking Dead Season 1. I got us adjoining rooms. There's no room for mercy when it comes to protecting someone you care for so it comes to great pleasure to see this creep get done in. His name and origin are unknown for the duration of the game, but he appears to be hell-bent on getting revenge on Lee's group. When he abducts Clementine at the end of Episode 4, Lee must find her in a rather disturbing hotel. Eventually, Lee subdues him through a button-mashing sequence. Number 4. Vladimir Makarov Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. This deal will generate millions for our cause. Money can buy many things, even power. He led a massacre against innocent civilians to start a war. He kidnapped the Russian president and used his daughter to get Russia to invade Europe. 
Oh, and it turns out he was the one responsible for the nuke in the first Modern Warfare game. Damn right this bastard deserves to die. He is eventually killed by Captain Bryce in a brutal scene, where he's beaten through a glass roof and hung by a stray cord. Light one up, Price. Number 3, Mr. X, Resident Evil 2 Remake. Sorry Nemesis, you've been dethroned. While you were satisfying to pump full of lead in the original, the remake turned you into a joke. But as it turns out, there was someone else worthy for the crown from one of the best Resident Evil games in recent years. Throughout your time in the police station, this walking indestructible tank will track you down to no end, causing a lot of fear and anxiety within the player. Jesus Christ! But stick through Leon's campaign and you'll finally get a chance to take him down, but not before taking him on in one of the toughest boss fights in the Resident Evil series. That's why it's so damn sweet to blast him off his feet. Number 2, Edgar Ross, Red Dead Redemption. Jack, go into the house, lock all the doors. Whatever happens, don't come outside, you hear me? He's the man who kidnapped John Marston's wife and son in order to use John to take out his old gang. It was bad enough to use John's family to do the government's dirty deed. It was worse when he later tried to have John and his family killed to cover up his actions. Although John sacrifices his life to ensure his wife and son escaped, Witnessing his son loading Edgar up with rounds after seeing him run in his own filth was the perfect conclusion to this Wild West tale. Want more video game content? Check out our gaming channel Mojo Plays and discover games and ideas you never knew existed. With more lists, breakdowns, and our latest series, Arcade Roulette. Justin and John are in! Oh. Hey, is that Porky Pig? Mm. There's a lot of things being ripped off in this game. Number 1, Calamity Ganon, The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. To know Calamity Ganon's true form, one must know the story from an age long past. The Demon King was born into this kingdom, but his transformation into malice created the horror you see now. When you start this game, you are given one simple goal. Destroy Ganon, the creature responsible for untold amounts of destruction over the years. And yet, he's so powerful that it takes the entire length of this masterpiece of a game to prepare to even stand a chance against him. Even throughout the game, you are always aware of his presence, as you see him hovering over Hyrule Castle even from a distance. So yeah, the build up to facing him was a long time coming. When you do finally face him, the fight is well worth the anticipation, and it's made the more sweeter if you defeated all the divine beasts prior and have a strong bond with your horse. Now my moment has finally come. Brace yourself, Ganon, for the sting of my revenge! Many games have been able to deliver satisfaction through well-placed story beats, but to pay off 40 gameplay hours in one triumphal moment? There is a good reason this game is a modern masterpiece. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.